there and welcome friends. This is Henrik Palmgren. Good to have you with us as we are getting ready for another radio program. We've uh, had a pretty interesting start of uh, 2010. A lot is going on as usual. And uh, today we're going to go into the depths of the occult, mystical, magical and if you will even demonic today with our guest Michael Wynn. Uh, you might know of his work as uh, Risen. Uh, he's behind the website hollywoodinsiders.net. I uh, recently came across a few of his videos, uh, specifically one called Magic and the Matrix that I want to talk more about here today. He has uh, more videos, articles and information on his website on various topics, uh, among other things black magic, symbolic, esoteric subjects and occult subjects as well. Uh, Hollywood Insiders is a documentary series focusing on Illuminati and Freemasonic influence and symbolism in Hollywood. And uh, I've invited Michael to the program to talk about his various uh, his research uh, in regards to various uh, demons and entities, movie symbolism, and also the Necronomicon, a uh, interesting book that has been around been around for quite some time now in different versions with uh, different authors. But uh, we're going to explore some of Michael's work here today, his research, and some of his films. So uh, good to have you with us, Michael, and uh, welcome to Red Eyes Radio. Thanks a lot, Henrik. Um, I've got so much respect for what y'all do at Red Ice and the fact that y'all are not scared of any topic or anything like that, so it's really an honor. Excellent. It's good to have you, Michael, and uh, you're uh, a new voice uh, to us. don't know if you've done any other radio programs before, but I think a good idea would be to just, uh, we can talk a little bit about, about yourself, your background, and, and specifically then your website, uh, Hollywood Insiders. Uh, .net. When did you start this up, and, and why did you want to kind of go into this uh, area, Michael? Um, well, around 2006, I became 9-11 aware, early 2006, and uh, I ran into all the usual suspects, Alex Jones, David Icke, uh, Tazarian, you guys. Um, I ended up finding a lot of things from movies that were reflected in my New World Order research, and... Um, piece by piece, you know, like stuff like about George Lucas and uh, his connection to the Illuminati. So I started to notice that there were strange things happening in movies, that we were being told a, a very real story in the movies. And um, I just started making a series out of it. And as for the website, that's, that's only just recently. Uh, this was never meant to be anything more than one or two, and it ended up being four videos, five videos, something like that. So how how are things going in terms of your uh, series? Do you, do you feel that the more you cover, the more it is to explore, and it just goes deeper and deeper, or do you, are you feeling that you're beginning to wrap up the subject at at this point? <laughs> well, it always goes deeper and deeper, as we all know. But I am getting close. Uh, I feel, I feel like I am getting close to the to the deepest secrets. That's for sure. Which I ended up finding out were magical, which was a shock. But um, yeah, uh, I just. I just keep when I find enough information out there that isn't in video form and isn't in a uh, conspiracy land I, I make a video about it and it's usually about movies and using movies to convince people okay very good uh, how is it in terms of if we talk generally a bit about magic and, and of course black magic in in specific then uh, what's your approach to, the, to to this subject do do you feel that it's uh, that it's you know, really something to it? Does it actually work? Or, or do you feel, uh, to I guess put it in the ter terms of what uh, Balkan, the character from The Ninth Gate says, uh, is it all mumbo-jumbo, as he says in there? <laughs> it is certainly not mumbo-jumbo. You know, the Illuminati, they have an angle because there's so few of them, and yet they've managed to commandeer the world. And you would have to have some kind of uh, advantage that is... <laughs> just beyond comprehension in order to accomplish what they have. And so I had to come to the conclusion that they were using some kind of angles, and it ended up being magic. And this is how they've managed to commandeer the world, a series of spells and everything. Very interesting. And when you say uh, the Illuminati, are you, uh, because this is a broad term, and we can even define that a little bit more, some people refer to it specifically and only to the secret society that potentially have emerged after it was uh, abandoned in, in Germany, Bavaria, back in the... Uh, back around 1780 or whenever it actually was banned, uh, or, or are using this term as a more general term for the, the, the global 
elite or the few co- controllers behind the scenes, so to speak, Michael? Well, it's it's actually a, a collection of secret societies that are all bound together and, and share the same traditions and probably even the same magical spells. And there, this is not just a, a single group, but uh, just a collection of groups who all have loyalty and fealty towards each other. This is not like a banker's thing or anything. This is purely black magicians and... Um, certainly a collection as opposed to the the Adam Weishaupt Illuminati that you refer to. Right. And, and do you think it's... Uh, are these people that we can see, you know, on, on, on the TV, do, do they have a public, uh, uh, you know, face out there, so to speak, or, or are you referring to the people that are, again, very much behind the scenes, and this is people we potentially even don't know the name of, so to speak? Oh, a little bit of both, because they need people in the front, that uh, are definitely in and in the in the know, and they need people in the back, and uh, so it's 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 both. It's some of the people that that we see every day. I mean, you've got Kissinger and plenty of people who have incredible power, and you clearly are in on it. Do you think it's uh, it's how should we put it demonic, or 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 do you think we're talking about uh, potentially non-human entities at the top of the of the Illuminati? This is a, a, a question that many people return to over and over and over again, just for the simple fact that uh, this agenda seems to be progressing over such a long time, extended period of time. I know that you discussed time, for instance, in in uh, in your latest uh, uh, installment of, of the Hollywood Insider series, Magic and the Matrix, and we can talk about this as well or tie this in with it, but to me it seems like um, there must be another force, if you will, um, behind the scenes because th- it stretches over such an amount, a period of amount of time. What, what's your approach or what's your theory or, on, on this, rather, Michael? I believe you're absolutely right because the agenda has uh, transcended what we would consider multiple human generations and they've been talking about building this new world order long before it was even a possibility, long before they even had a complete map of the, of the world. So it's somebody else's agenda because so many humans have struggled and fought to to get this agenda through and then died, you know. I mean, it's clearly somebody else's work whose whose lifespan uh, extends way beyond humans. And yes, I, I believe at the top of the pyramid you have spiritual beings that are not human. So, uh, so how do you think they they operate into into our world? And, and we can go into a little bit of the the interesting aspect that you mentioned in regards to to time as well and, and different dimensions. Basically, that we potentially are looking at a scenario where these beings, these entities, or, or energies or whatever, however we want to define that, are at times uh, seems to, to blend into our reality and, and at times people might even be able to see them in, in one version or another. Uh, but but they, have an, they have abilities that we're, we do not because they're not limited by, by the dimensions uh, that, that we are, Michael. Tell us about this. Well, it, the, uh, the, in, the, in the video, I pretty much just try to give everybody a, a very easy way to imagine extra dimensional beings because it, it's still hard, you know. Um, it's very difficult for the human mind to even grasp uh, four dimensions and above. And so I felt like I should draw an analogy um, to, un- to help people understand how it works. And, and how it works is, is basically uh, like. In the, in the video, for instance, how I drew the analogy of a human and a bird and a bird having access to this extra dimension. And so, you know, you could fence a human in, but you, but you couldn't fence a bird in. And it's very similar to how you can't really fence in a ghost. And yet there's all these kind of questions about, you know, how is it that the ghosts are, can, you know, are uh, subject to gravity, but at the same time they can walk through walls. So mm-hmm. some very interesting questions start to emerge about their abilities yes. and how they're coming in and out <clears throat> and the extra dimensions themselves and how when one dimension closes in on another for instance the objects in those two parts might uh, interact during that time and um, so that's another thing that I went over and, and it seems to be a kind of a blending at certain points in time then there is one kind of major uh, point that you bring up in your video which which uh, fascinated me as well because it seems to to be that only at certain times there the the dimensions have, for whatever reason, an ability to blend more. There, there seems to be a communication, if you will, then between dimensions at these times. This can, um, as you elaborate on in the video as well, has to do even with astronomical uh, alignments, the positioning of, of planets.